And you I just, think there are in other countries that this dude is pissing off? You will be caught tripping. And just because Puerto Rico is, you know, a little ways across the pond, don't believe that if something comes up the East Coast a little further, that we won't be affected. Please know that just because you live in a major metropolitan area, New Orleans was a major metropolitan area. Dallas, a major metropolitan area. Please know that these natural disasters can and will because we haven't addressed climate change. So we're gonna have to suffer the consequences. The earth is an organism that is gonna protect itself. One way or the we other. are like a virus on this planet. And if it gets sick enough, it's gonna get rid of the virus. It's going to use its own natural immune system to get rid of the virus. That said, hey, what's up, Sean? Uh, Mon Sean and Sean. Um, yes, Reggie. I mean, uh, Kira Barry says hello. He's proud of his twin. Real quick, shout out to uh, Carmen Montanez. I saw your husband the other day. Um, we have to be, we have to be ready uh, for more. We have to not just be ready for more. We have to first step up and out of our comfort zone and don't be afraid to don't be afraid to know your neighbors don't be afraid to walk around your community and see what's there and who is there so that when somebody infiltrates you'll know the infiltrator because they don't look like somebody that lives around here we have to start doing that again i, I worked with and this was the saddest thing i worked with women and Many of them didn't want to leave their kids at daycares. And, and I, they were like, well, no, I'm not leaving my kid with nobody that I don't know because something can happen to them. I understand the thinking. I do. It's not that I don't. You got to trust somebody. At some point, you got to trust somebody. No man or woman is an island. You have to, well, even if you are an island, look at Puerto Rico. So get yourself together. Like you have to go knock on uh, Rashida's door, ask her, do she want to come over for tea? And y'all chop it up a little bit and let y'all little rug rats run around and eat cookies and get them in the carpet. No cookies. Whatever, chocolate, whatever, whatever, fruit, give them bananas, whatever. Just start that, start that, start that. We gonna dead that. And move on to, and you know, it, it dawned on me last night while I was thinking of what we were going to talk about today in the show. And has anybody heard about exactly what happened with the one hundred million dollars that Mark Zuckerberg gave the North Public Schools <laughs> some years ago? I knew there was a team that was supposed to uh, look and see what areas it would be appropriated, but I'm sure that the people who were on the team were probably monetarily compensated. So we know that 10 to 15 percent goes to overhead. We gonna say that. So we gonna push 15 million off the table with this hundred million. The state just left, so you know they some regs got in order. Maybe they have state done built new schools and stuff. We gonna give that another 25, 20, 25, 20, 20, 25 million. What what happened to the rest of that money? Are you, the books that your kids are bringing home? Do they look new? Do they? I, I don't think so. And this is the part. This is the other part. A hundred million dollars sounds like a whole lot of money. It sounds like a whole lot of money. But that's until you understand that the city of New York's annual budget for education is usually around a half a billion dollars. So that 100 million, yes, it was a drop in the bucket, but when you already have a budget that is taking care of the majority of your overhead and you have an additional 100 million to spend, where did it go? Who got raises? Did Cammy get a, a golden parachute on her way out? I'm sure she did. Y'all need to, when y'all, y'all are, and, and I'm saying y'all, but I ain't got no kids, but listen, Y'all need to ask these questions when you go into these schools. Who's Do going into schools? I see these parents line up trying to get their kids into at the beginning of the year. Oh, to, they to all register, lined up trying to register their not. kids and get the kids in the best slot. In the charter and schools. all these charter schools. Is that where the money went? Like, y'all need that. You have the right to ask these questions. Y'all taking what they give you. That's, that's slavery. 
it's another form of slavery. They throw you scraps, don't tell you what it is, and you just eat it. You allow your kids to be educated by people who don't like you, who don't need you, who don't want to see you prosper. They teach your kids things that they are never going to have a practical application of until the day they die. If what they teach your kids is accurate, any- how about that? Whether because it's practical it or not, let's just talk about the misinformation that's, that's out there. We just celebrated Columbus Day. Why on God's green earth are we celebrating a man that we know lied? Not only did he lie, he was a, a rapist, he was a pillager, he was a pirate, he was a, a lot of things, but he was nothing to be celebrated. And we know this. And, and yeah, I watched the, I watched part of the, I was channel surfing and I saw a little bit of the beginning of a parade and um, I saw this lady, she said, well, you know, um, we, we, we know that Christopher Columbus didn't discover America, but he did all these other great things and it's still um, an Italian American tradition and I'm all like, yeah, and slavery is still a white tradition. That doesn't mean we should mm. celebrate it mm. or continue it. Mm. Um, so not for nothing. And my, and my son was out of school. I had to find out what I had to say. Well, anyway, I just don't understand why we're still celebrating something that we know is not factual. Like, we know it's not. And we know why. Like you said, we, we know all of the things that this dude that, did. That he did. And it's, it's we, the Muslim community is still fighting to get the Eid as a nationally recognized holiday in many, many cities. Even though Muslims are 1.7 billion strong. In the world. That's all. <laughs> that's it. That's all I that's all I had to that's say. That's funny because I'm sitting here thinking, so we we won't celebrate a day that is observed in the in the physical and the spiritual by one point how many billion? One point seven. By one point seven billion. But billions of us celebrate a holiday, I won't say which one, that never existed based on a complete fairy tale. At the end of every year, we go broke to celebrate a holiday. You know what? That and I'm never say existed. It. It's I like it though. Oh. I'm gonna say it. Because I did some, because this was, to me, this was so funny. I, I did tale? a little bit of research, you know, on Christmas. And I found out that at the beginning of the 20th century, Christmas, not only was it not a holiday here, it wasn't a holiday in the country that, you know, we came from, which is, you know, England and the UK. It wasn't a holiday then. In fact, it was banned in the 1800s. It was a pagan holiday. Pagan. And now, the... Because <laughs> this is just amazing. This is like the best magic trick. This is one of the best magic tricks I have ever seen. Merchandising and consumerism has convinced you that your Lord and Savior was born on the 25th of December. But this is another thing, though, about the, the foolishness and the trickery. I can't call it anything else. I'll call it trickery. And and I'm a Christian. And, and I observe Christmas for the commercial holiday of it. And I do make sure my son has a great season for the spirit of the holidays. But even when it comes to Christmas in church, we know his birthday wasn't on the 25th. But everybody comes out to celebrate it, don't Listen, they? We know this, and mm-hmm. we still observe it. Observe it in December. He was born in the spring. Though. We know. Look, we we tell each other that too in church. But nobody has. Is it nobody has the courage? You know what I think it is. I think that we we can't let go of everything. People want to hold on to something. There's so much more that's real that we can hold on to. Well, yeah. We can hold on to each other. <laughs> but we don't but do The Wizard of Oz is my favorite movie. And sometimes you just want to keep the curtain up. Maybe not on everything, but sometimes you just want to keep the curtain up. That's the problem. We it don't is. know who behind the curtain. But we don't know how many curtains there are. Let's start with that. Then there's that. There's a lot of curtains. There's a lot of curtains. There's one Wizard of Oz, but there are a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. Particularly, I keep telling y'all, watch out for Kim Jong-un. He is not playing with us. Yeah. I can't stress it enough. That man and is, I'm not like a, a conspir- conspiracy theorist or nothing like no, that. No, but he's a sociopath. It's, co- it's, it's coming. It's coming. He's, he's a narcissistic practicing. sociopath. And he got it. Yeah. He, he got had, the weapons. He, he has everything. He practicing. He not playing no games. Like Bruce Lee said, he's not afraid of 
you know, 10,000 people kicking him one time. He's afraid of the man who, the one, one man, man who that kicks him 10,000 10, times, or who practices 10,000 kicks. We haven't learned. We haven't learned. Unfortunately, we're that arrogant. We haven't learned. But um, uh, it's going to be like like the, like the my mother used to say, a hard head make a soft ass. I don't, so. I don't want a soft ass. I don't I don't want it to get <laughs> You don't I, want it because, Pineapples Well we'll see because I I paid attention to history And all of that social studies So I remember And I You know I've read things since then I know what a nuclear attack Could do to this country mm -hmm. Any one place Any uh, One city A whole state The after effects Residual Radiation There's so much to be concerned with mm -hmm. And Before people probably that didn't pay enough attention to history don't know how we disarmed nuclear missiles for a long time or nuclear weapons for a long time that's not the case anymore mm -mm. they have them they're using them they're just about if i'm sure they're locked and loaded the little red button that we're afraid that our president has or has access to has nothing on the big red button that i know kim jong-un has we can act like it's not happening we can get distracted by all these other things that's happening but at the end of the day we don't know what type of terrorism is coming, but we do know that there's a terrorism. I mean, it, it, it's just inevitable. This administration keeps kicking a sleeping dog. And the thing about it, dog. the dog ain't sleep. He ain't sleep. He's sitting there looking at you with his eye cocked open, growling. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's such a real threat. It's such a real threat. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't walk out my house Wait, like, no, what if they bombing today? But at the end of the day, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a theory. It's, it's a potential actuality, unfortunately. It, it really is. And we haven't. I, do we digest that in our daily? Did we? Yeah, Reggie. Uh, Nork actually did get that money, and the orange man is insulting that. Oh yeah, every chance he gets, he is, and because he's a he's he's a sociopath himself. He's got two sociopaths with billions of people lives in their hands. That's the craziest thing I've ever chicken. seen. Right. It's the, oh. They playing chicken. I, the smoke and mirrors is real. No offense, Cardi B and all the rest of the housewives of this and the real such and of that. All of that is meant to distract you, is, is meant to keep you anesthetized so that you do not be, so that you are not upset about what's going on with your government. You don't know what laws he has passed, how many executive orders he has signed, do you? What has been repealed, you can now discriminate if you are an employer yes, you can. against LGBTQ employees in your business. Mm -hmm. That's a huge step backwards in what I have always called part of the civil rights movement. I know people don't like to equate the LGBTQ struggle with the civil rights movement, but being a member of both communities, I'm gonna tell you it's the same. Please do that. And now, it's absolutely the same. Mm -hmm. We are going so, I don't know if there's such thing as a, a, a gay Jim Crow, but we, <laughs> we th that's what's happening to us right now. We, we, we are experiencing, and I'll speak for myself, we, my community is experiencing a gay Jim Crow. At one point where whatever you look like, however you presented, whatever you identified as, you were protected at work, that's not the case. So it was bad enough that as a patron of a business, let's say, a lesbian or gay person was discriminated against, now you might not even be able to keep your job. It's Unless outrageous. You keep yourself in the closet. It's outrageous. It is. But we're not mad enough yet. Well, enough, enough of us don't know about it. Let's start with that. Because like I said, mm -hmm. the wizard put the curtain up. Mm -hmm. And we were so outraged about all the other things that absolutely deserve outrage. But we, this one split by a lot of us. Yeah. So, yeah. It's real. I, I, and I'm going to keep asking the question, when are we going to get mad enough? When, when are we going to get upset enough to affect change in our own communities? Again, if you want to join this conversation, 973-900-6453 is the number to call in. I dare you. Um, hey, Barry sir, Sterling, 973-900-6453 <laughs> is the number to call in. I dare you to join this conversation. I, I, I truly do. Um, challenge, that's the first thing. If, any, if you're watching this at home, Challenge yourself to move out of your comfort zone and call in. Start there. Little small steps. Whatever Baby your opinion steps. is, 
What happened? What did you feel when you saw the video of these two young girls on the ground under a cop? Mm-hmm. How did that make you feel? And then I want to know what you did. Because at the end of the day, it took me five seconds with a number of the orange, orange police. And I would like to know how many people called it. Yeah. How many people on my live actually called? Most of, And what's, what kills me is most of us go, well, well I, I, what can we do? We walk around with $800 phones that can pretty much tell you anything. Everything. It can tell you how to wipe your ass properly if you need it. You can find out anything else. Any matter of public information, anything that has to do with policy and change, you can find out by taking your phone out, going to the little Google situation, and typing it in. It's not hard. We just don't do it because we don't believe that our one voice is going to affect change. But if your one voice and my one voice and her one voice, if all of those voices get together, it's then a choir. It's not one voice. And I just want to jump in right quick. I actually called Orange Police Department this morning. Mm -hmm. And it was super simple. And after, well, first Shorty gave me shade, I'm going to be honest, because I asked to speak to Officer David straight like that. Hello, how are you? Yes, may I speak to Officer David, please? And she knew what I was calling about, so she was all like, oh, Officer David. I said yes. So she said, well, what's your name? I said, well, I'm Just Joy from Just Joy Media, and I'm calling to get a comment about what happened. Straight like that. She gave me the telephone number to the communications director. Hung up, hung up with her. I called, and he was nice, polite, helpful. He told me that he would send me the statement. He would text it to me. Nice. And, again, just as nice as he could be, and he texted it to me. So we, we get, get, get so, easily. so easily. And I would say do, do it now before they change the phone number. I would say do it now before the phone line suddenly become busy. And I say show up now before there's a reason or a way they can block us from it. First thing Monday, the kids walked out today. Excellent. First thing Monday, any and everybody need to be blocking every all the streets in Orange. Show up. Because it's serious. And if we let these two young ladies get pinned down by a cop, then there's no hope for any of us. I got no hope for my four-year-old. Because at this point, girls aren't safe. Our brothers already weren't safe. Girls aren't safe. High school, what you gonna start dumping on elementary? We gotta stop it somewhere. And it can be as simple as a phone call. It can be as simple as showing up on your lunch hour. Even if we don't all do it at the same time. If enough people walk in Orange Police Department and want to know what happened with them kids, they're going to have to do something. And we can't just do it this week. We got to do it next week. Mm -hmm. It's like we finding out what happened with that Zuckerberg money. In a month, we got to find out from Orange Police Department what have you what all happened? done to retrain or resensitize or get in touch with y'all cops to let them know they can't jump on kids, much less little girls. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, it was very powerful that the kids walked out. But imagine if every kid in every school in Essex County walked out. Policy would be would have been changed tonight. Because you can't contain that. Facts. You can't contain it. And once they can't contain it, something's got to change. And once we all lend our voices to the situation, we can affect the, 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 we can affect the way that the change swings. If it swings in our favor or, or some other direction, we can affect that once we once they know that we are going to be heard. But we have to get collected. We really do have to get collected. Uh, Reggie says, could you suggest a script for people to use who are not knowledgeable in speaking out in a situation like this? Yeah. Even if it come down to something simple like what the fuck happened? You don't have to have a collegiate, but hello, yes, this is yes. You don't got to do all that. At the end of the day, the pain these people feeling is real. It's hurtful. It don't have to be clean and nice. Call over there and say, what happened? I want to know what happened with them kids. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a script or, or have a, a the same prepared speech or, or even that educated voice. None of that. If it's just as simple as why, just call and say why. I'm a citizen. You don't need a script. I pay taxes. How come? Or just why? call and say I'm mad. Why you do that? I don't. I don't care how. If qué pasó, dígame. Yo necesito información. I don't care what language or how you spin it. You could just call and, and just say, "Look, what happened?" She did that. Oh yeah. <laughs> what, 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 whatever way you can express it. If you want to write a letter, if you just want to get a T-shirt and put a circle on it with a line through it, you don't have to have something prepared. Your pain, your real feelings, how you really feel. That's enough. 
Because the bottom line is that if once enough of us call, they gonna know what the hell it is that we uh, that we hell, calling listen. out. Shorty knew she they was gonna call know. Davis, right? Absolutely. They gonna know once you are the hundred and eighty seventh caller. Yeah. <laughs> Patricia is going to be on the phone like, yeah, all right, could you hold on a minute? Yeah, she might sound a little bit nasty, but at the end of the day, she's a public servant. Your taxes pay her salary, and yes, they do have to answer to us. Yes, they do. There's not a time when they don't. There are council people available to you in Orange, um, Board of Education In every members. city. In every city. That you can, If you can't get to the mayor, shout out to the individual who forwarded me the mayor's personal email if you can't get to big city public officials there are smaller like dvs said if you just go to the high school and talk to the vp or the principal you can still affect change and the last thing i want to say is that as powerful as our voices are our silence is just because mm-hmm. they know we won't get mad because they know we'll stay quiet they allow them to affect change in the way that they want they swing change their way because we stay silent yeah each and every day this house might be more powerful. It might be louder than what our voices are. But we can change that too. We have to. Um, lastly, what? The, how much time we got left? Eight minutes. Okay, real quick. I, I want to just keep, uh, not keep everybody, but let everybody know. I was reading an article where Mark Zerg and his wife, whose last name is Chan. Priscilla Chan. Priscilla Chan. Okay. They are a funding an initiative for people who commit crimes that aren't violent but don't have enough for their bail please do Reggie please do Monday morning he, Reggie says well I plan to call Orange Police Department on Monday morning good job and everybody else watching you can google the number and please call Orange Police and ask them what happened ask them what they're going to do about it digging their behinds that's the only thing that they're going to understand um but Mark Zuckerberg, uh, uh, and this is helping from another angle because we all know that the prison industrial complex in the United States of America is nothing but a modern day plantation. We all know that, that's common knowledge. The way, part of the way that they keep young black brothers and sisters in the system is not just black, minority, period, brown people. In the system is that they for uh, offenses that are nonviolent for misdemeanor offenses if you can't afford bail you're sitting there for a year to two years three years however many years until your case comes up just because you couldn't afford that one thousand dollar bail just because mama can't get it together because your other three or four brothers and sisters at home and she just can't pull that type of money to go into one place the house can't go up but she can't afford to do that they want to get rid of that system so if you find this information keep abreast of this information and find out how you can get it in your area find out what you can do to make that come to a jail near you I don't know how to say it any other way they're trying to fund this initiative because they are aware that it that minority people are being held in prison and under allegedly when you commit a crime even if you're arrested you are presumed innocent until you're proven guilty but if you're sitting in prison for two years how how innocent do you feel ask Khalif Brown we can't we can we can't even ask Khalif Brown and you can catch that story it's on Netflix in, in, in its entirety um it's cruel and unusual punishment. And like you said, for you to be innocent, you should not be punished at the same time. It's paradoxical to what the law and the justice system is supposed to be about. You are being punished while your innocence is presumed. And the fact that that young man killed himself, even after he was released from prison and started going to school and things were kind of looking up, people were you know, taking note of his situation and we're trying to help him. And he still felt help. So dis- he was in such despair. Even after all of that, a megastar, Jay-Z, reached out to his family. That wasn't enough. After being in jail, being jumped daily, being put in solitary confinement at 16, 15 years old for over 200 days. I'm sorry, 
for over 200 days. The, the adolescent brain, the, the human brain, period, is not developed and it's not socialized at 15 years old. So when there's a 200 day gap where there is no other human interaction, what you are doing is basically deforming his brain. You're not allowing it to form fully. In addition to the PTSD that he suffered from being deprived of food, from being deprived of water, other basic necessities. And when he was out in population, trying to get jumped in or, or not get jumped in again. How do we let stuff like this happen still? We call ourselves a civilization. We mock people in Africa and in, in different in South America countries, and we so call them third world countries. Barbaric. But they treat each other with respect. They treat each other with hospitality. Unless you come and pick a fight with them, i.e. Christopher Columbus and his bullshit, they have no qualm. They have no no quarrel with you. They will take care of you because they know that you're a person. We're the only ones who do stuff like this. We haven't recognized that capitalism is going to be the death of our society yet. And that's not to move to socialism or communism, but we need to rethink what the fuck is going on. And just know that all your money, and I, I have to say this because I, it's just been on my mind. Your money is like, it's, it's an illusion. There's no there's not enough gold to back all the money that is in circulation in the United States, and that's supposed to be how the system works. It's an illusion. The only reason that we have that we believe gold is valuable is because we allowed a whole bunch of white men to tell us it is. We allowed them to tell us that diamonds are valuable. All of these different things, it's nothing but smoke and mirrors. It is it's really a messed up concept. I could prattle on um, about that. But do I, I challenge anybody, just do, do just a little bit of research. You'll find out what I'm saying is absolutely <laughs> the truth. And if you can't do your research, please tune in every Friday to DBS Fridays here on GSRadioNorth.com mm -hmm. because he'll do the research for you. And Just Joy has a show. I'm working on a lot of shows okay. and a lot of projects. Let's start with the one on GS. Uh, um, we will soon be resuming the Sister to Sister Empowerment Hour. <laughs> We will be, um, I'm also working on episode 3, working on um, a lot of different branches of this media thing. JustJoyMedia.com is expanding. We recently acquired, um, I would say, maybe not acquired, but my assistant got a promotion. She's now the creative director of Just Joy Media and a correspondent. So shout out to Icon Don. Nice. Um, last night. And she she asked me if I wanted to do an interview with Danny Simmons. And I said that she should do the interview with Danny Simmons, who is Russell and Joey Simmons' brother. So she did the interview. The interview was amazing. But while she was doing the interview, I'm going to keep this short. There was a young York artist standing off to the side, sketching Danny Simmons while he was speaking. He did it in five minutes. And he got from the, the horseshoe on the head, I won't call the brand, but from the horseshoe to his goatee to everything. So I swooped around the side, introduced the guy, let them see it. When I tell you he was humble and appreciative and loved the art and said that he was going to take it and frame it and put it in his house. And it gave that young man a life. So shout out to Danny Simmons. Shout out to the North nice, Arts Council Open, nice. Open Doors Festival. If you have time, check it out. There's events going on all weekend. And um, that's pretty much it. Just Joy, I'm working on, again, trying to get the side chick manual finished by the end of the year. And um, that's about it. No, no. This Monday, right quick, this Monday, please, if you have time, I want you to RSVP to RemyProducers.com. They are having a producer competition. This is the season four, and this is the semifinals. So what I want you to do is, if you can meet me in Manhattan on Monday night, please do, because I'm going to be there personally to support one of the, and he's not just one of the hottest up and coming DJs because I said so, but DJ, not DJ, I'm sorry, music producer Midi Beats in Philly. He is one of the semifinalists for the Remy Producers competition. So I'm going to support that. He's also my cousin. Shout out to all my family in Philly. Y'all hear me all the time say how much I love Philly and I love going out there. But my cousin made it from the basement. My, when I tell you from the basement, my, from the basement, 
making music to the semifinals of this Remy contest. So um, we're going to be in the building real big. Shout out to Mitty Beat. Shout out to Mama Mitty, my Aunt Karen. So we're just going to um, support that and hope for the best for my family. So that's, what's that's up. pretty much it from Just Joy this week. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> yes, Reggie, we have to speak up. We really do. Um, we have to let our children know that it's okay to speak up when they're speaking the right things. We have to not be afraid of our kids anymore. We need to go walk through our neighborhoods and say hi to the kids when they're walking past you and let them know that adults do see them. We have to just start doing basic, be, be human to them. And I bet you they'll remember you and it'll you'll, you'll start something absolutely amazing. Um, I implore all of you to reach out to the Orange Police Department or City Hall and the, City Hall. And City Hall. The council, and the Board the of Education. Council, the Board of Education. Reach out to these entities and let them know that <laughs> this is not how we treat our students. This and I would jump in right quick. There are community-based organizations, people who do social services in Orange. Reach out to them as well mm -hmm. because we need to hold. I, I know a lot of the times we say where are our leaders. Like what happened to our generation of Al Sharptons. We don't have those. So we have to be those. And there are some. I don't want to name any, you know, call anybody out per se, but go to these places. Go to the places. Go to the business owners in Orange and see what they, if there was an altercation across the street at the pizza store, go to them. Make sure that everybody in the community is involved and invested in making sure this does not happen to anybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, once again, thank you guys. Anybody who's in the Essex County area tonight, I, I for you to come on up and celebrate with us at Club Elevation, the five-year anniversary. What's the address? Club. I don't know. It's, it's 1425 it's Springfield Avenue on the corner of 43rd Street and Springfield Avenue in Irvington. Come in the side door on the 43rd Street side and come on down to the Elevation Club. It is bananas. We're going to have a good time tonight. What's the color? Adam Rios. Uh, it's on my page. Okay. I'm, I don't I don't know off hand. Um, Adam Rios and Mark Lewis are going to be there tonight. Come hang out. Have a good time. And tomorrow night, Let's get ready to humble, baby. At the end of the month, we got Cassio's Shindig. It's going to be an amazing month. So uh, shout out again to my little brother, Beloved. Happy birthday, my dude. I didn't get to speak to you today, but I hope that you see this video and know that I was thinking of you. You know you my dude. Um, and we're going to keep on rocking. I'm going to see y'all here next Devious Friday. Y'all have a good weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Do anything, do anything, do anything that your heart begs you to do. And remember, what is what is the saying? Um, the higher you fall, the higher you bounce. Remember that when you get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry.